there's a clue here that I want to bring your attention to. There's a clue here, right? Listen to me carefully, traders. This is going to reward you for the rest of your trading life if you get this lesson. And the idea is to basically be able to duplicate some of the actions from the good trades and to be able to avoid some of the things from the bad trades. Every trade review is not going to be a good trade. What we'll sometimes do is just do a deep dive on a specific trading concept or a specific trading tactic so that you can build these tactics step by step, brick by brick, and incorporate them into your daily trading. And so because of this higher reliability, my traders are taught to play these more aggressively, to play these with more size, to put more money at risk on the dual and triple. One concept will reward you for the rest of your living days as a trader. Think about that. One thing can pay dividends forever. That's the beauty of this. Also, it's the beauty of these study sessions. All it takes is one thing that pays out forever, like the investment that never stops giving. 200 period moving average, you got the 20 period moving average. Those are two of the items. Then what you have is yesterday's closing price. And then you just want to grab the last high from yesterday here and the last low from yesterday. And this becomes item four. We're going to take the top of whatever is the top item. I'm going to take this and extend it. And this becomes your fat four block. Stop drops through the fat four, bounces back up toward the 20, drops to a new low. All right, the idea is that longs are better above the fat four, shorts are better below the fat four. Goes long here, stop here, it drops hard, then comes back to break even. Should he just kill the trade, all right, or hang on to the play and take the stop? I say you can kill the trade, but only if this drop is troublesome. So you got a troublesome drop that bounces back. You have a right to just get out of break even because this changes the trade. Why does it change the trade? It erased the reason you were buying. So now you don't even have the reason anymore. It erased it. When you get your money back, I'd be out of this thing. Now, if it did this, boom, pull back like that, that's a healthy pullback, but this is not a healthy pullback. It has now erased the strength. Now, that is more likely. If, not that you should, but if you bought here above this elephant bar right there, and then you added here, what would you do here? Let's help Chris out. You're taking profits. Why would you think that where you take profits should be about where I teach you to take profits at new highs. Now, there are exceptions, guys. If your stop does this, you buy here, stop. It comes up, 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 boom. That is profit taking right there. New high profit take. However, this is different. Boom. That is a buy. Now, what's the difference? Let me draw it for you. See? See the difference? Look at where it's come from. Look at where this has come from. From nothing. So think of it like a runner. This runner down here runs all the way to here. Running, 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 running. You see? But this race just started. That's a different new high. It's not tired. It's just beginning. This runner that starts down here is tired up here. So look at this. If I want to short, guys, if I want to try to try this short, see these, see these green bars below the 200, all right? And you had this drop here. So let's say I try this. One. So usually drop, pause, drop, right? Okay? So that's what we have here. Drop, pause, drop. Okay. So, 
Um, these tails are so small, you can go under the tail. But if the tail was a little more sizable, like this, I would go under the body and keep the stop tight, not under the tail. So if the tail is sizable, it's going to make my risk unit bigger. All right? I think it's more important to keep that risk unit small. Now my risk unit is little. I can deal with that risk unit. If I were to take the same apple and show you a 15 minute chart, you have one solid bar that went up here. Take a look. That's where it was at the high. Okay? Now, let's do it. So think about it. You dropped. You get two levels up. That's it. You see it? Just a few of you let me know. Do you see it? Miraculous, right? They got in early. Good. Maybe they even added on the first RBI. Beautiful. They're here, right? They took some profits. Just say they did two and they did one and they took one and one. Now they got one left. The stock drops like this. They move their stop to break even. So here's the break even stop. Stock crashes back like this, but doesn't stop them out. Now they get the bounce and they're still waiting up here for the whale complete. That's not happening. Now you understand the concept, right? It broke the halfway. You're getting two levels up at best but they're still asking the stock to, to go up there. Does this make sense? Are you picking up what I'm laying down? It's powerful, right? Now, think about this. Think about this. How many people in the world sloshing around in the market, participating in Facebook stock trading chat chats with a whole bunch of other blind people? How many people understand this? risking their family's money. I am telling you very few in the entire world. Very few people know how to assess the probability of the next move. And so now with this concept, you should be able to. You should also be able to know when you should be coming out of a play before you're in the play. You were looking for a whale complete, but because it got there, now the whale complete is objective is over. You know this is your objective now. Two levels up, out, done, move on. Next trade, especially in bear markets, I play what's called the gap, snap, and crap. The stock, the gap's down here. This whole area is the resistance, right? We can take my concept. If this is resistance, Let's do it. Let's cut it in half. Let's take the third, the bottom third of it. This would be the top third of it, right? Now, this area is the strongest. Yes? So, this snaps up. I've got orders waiting just a little under the 200 all the way through like that. I always bridge the item a little under all the way through it a little above it just like that because it's never a skinny line, right? So we snap back, snap back, snap back. We come into the orders and boom, that's my game, right? And here it is right here, $4,800 on that play. But just grabbing the area, now, the last thing I want to do is get stopped out here, like in the bottom third of your zone. You got to always think that your support and resistance is not a line. It's not a point. It's an area. It's a zone. It's a trampoline that when you bounce on it or it's boxing ropes that have leeway, you're really leaning on the boxing ropes here. You're leaning against the ropes there. Does this make sense? Are you guys following me? I've taught you how to position your trades based on the FAT4. So you've got this zone here. You've got that zone there. Those are the really 
great positions under and right above. Coming out of this zone, you have good odds of getting a whale. See the bounce into the third? Now go all the way across. And it's pretty much the same. You should never forget that that bottom third, more or less, can never be perfect, guys, is the strongest level of resistance. How do I choose stocks, a stock watch list? I actually went over this today. I'll give you some brief, brief clues as to how to grab a, a watch list, right? I was teaching my traders today and that you want price representation. So you never want, let's say you're going to build a 10 stock trading list, watch list. You don't want all 10 stocks clustered in the same price range. So you want price diversification, price representation, but you have to pick a price range. So let's say the price range is $30 to 120. Okay. That's your range 30 to 120. So if you have a range, the majority of your range should be the majority of the stocks should sit in the middle of that range. And then you should have some stocks sprinkled on the outer ends of that range. So the majority should be around $70, 70, 80, 60, 70, 80, like that. That's where the majority should be. Then you should have one or two above and one or two below, right? That's number one, price diversification. Number two, you want sector diversification. So you might want a one or two bank stocks, one or two chip stocks, one or two oil stocks, one or two metals, um, one or two big tech stocks, one or two socials, one or two uh, transportation stocks, whatever. You want at least four sectors represented in the list. You don't want a stock, a list of 10 stocks and eight of them are bank stocks. That's ridiculous. Okay. So you want price representation. You want sector representation. Then you want volatility. So listen, most people are afraid of volatility. Like everyone says, Oliver, Bitcoin's volatile. Exactly. That's where the opportunity is. We as, we as marketplace, I want volatility. I can turn volatility into my friend. It's an enemy when you have no knowledge. It's an enemy. Volatility is an enemy when you're not skilled, when you have no knowledge, when you're not educated, when you don't know how to turn volatility in your, into your friend. I want volatility. So you want price re representation, sector representation, and volatility. You don't want a dead stock. You don't want a stock where every time you get into it, it's like watching paint dry, you know, or watching the grass grow. Like you don't need that. Time is of the essence when you're trading, because if you're hanging in your trades too long, there's opportunity cost. There's other things popping off that you're missing. All right. And so... You need volatility. And the way to do that is by average true range. Pick stocks that have a very decent average true range for their specific price range. And that's how you narrow things down. So once you get your sectors in place and you're in, in the right price range, so you've got your drug stocks, you've got your banks, you've got your chip stocks, you've got your big tech stocks. Now you've got maybe a list of 20, 30. Now you got to get those down based on the criteria of volatility. Maybe you have nine banks, but you got to get down to two, which two have the highest volatility. All right. Maybe you have four chip stocks, but you need to get down to one, which one has the highest volatility. And that's how you come up with that six to 10. Boom. You sit there. You don't watch anything else. You don't look at anything else. You don't trade anything else for many, 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 many months. In order to know locations, we need two moving averages. All right. These two moving averages will be forever on every single chart, every single time frame you ever look at. It's the 20 period simple moving average and the 200. We use them as a buddy system. We use them as a buddy system together, not just one, not just one at a time. We have both of them on the chart at the same time. So I want you to always assume that we're playing two minute charts. We have the, the 20 and the 200 overlaid on our two minute chart. They're both, look at, notice how the 20 and the 200 are relatively flat and close together. That's important. So they're relatively flat and close together. They're laying on their backs. 
if you will. They're close together. They're sunbathing, whatever, however you want to look at it, right? They're not standing up. They're not running to the upside. They're not running to the downside. They're relatively flat and they're relatively close together. When you have these two moving averages relatively close together, the location right above them, OMG. Let's just put it, OMG. This, you build your house there and you can name your price. Do you understand this? This is the best location. That's why I have it labeled number one, duh. The number one location, the location that will give your events the highest value, that will, that will give your house the highest value, that will give your elephant bar the highest value, that will give your bottoming tail bar the highest value, that will give your bull 180 the highest value is that location right there. So if you get an elephant bar here, it's, it does, it's not 70% follow through, it's now in the 80% follow through. If you put a bottoming tail bar there, it's not 70%, it's 80% now. If you put dual bottoming tail bars there, it's, not, it's practically 100% guaranteed. That's very dangerous to say, but practically, almost. Because dual tail bars already have 90%, you put the dual tail bar right there, and you can basically just name your price. There is no location better than number one here, right above two, your two main moving averages, the 20 and the 200, when they're flat, okay? Best location. Second best location, well, best location on the downside is right below the two moving averages. So we want bull events here, right? We want bull events here, and we want bear events there. So I want bull elephant, I want bear elephant bars here. And I want bull elephant bars there. Okay? So above the moving averages, we want to go long. So we want long or bull events. Under the moving averages, right under, we want bear bars so that we can play short. Now, if we get the opposite bars there, we do nothing. So if I get this bar here, like this, I do nothing here because I don't have a match. This is my bull territory and this is my bear negative territory. I want red and bearish there and I want bull green and bullish there. If I get a mismatch, I'm sipping coffee. All right? Please understand that, write that down. No mismatching, no mismatching. Green, powerful events right above, go long. Red, powerful events right below, go short. Write that down, don't mismatch. If we're right above the moving averages, we're going long. If we're right below the moving averages, we're going short. The order of the moving averages don't matter. So notice how in this scenario, the 200 is above the 20. All right, here's the 200, it's above the 20. Doesn't matter. In this, in this image, I have the 20 above the 200. It doesn't matter. It's not the whether one is on top of the other or not. That doesn't matter very much. What matters more is, are they, re are they both relatively flat and are they both relatively close together? That matters more, not the order, not who's on top, who's on bottom. All right, that doesn't matter. It's, are they relatively flat and are they close together? All right, so the order doesn't matter. What's location or neighborhood number two? If you can't get, look, sometimes the market's not gonna give you neighborhood number one. You're gonna have to look at maybe neighborhood number two. Now this neighborhood number two is in the wide state. So remember, the, 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 other lo the other neighborhood or location was in the narrow state when they're both together. Well, what about when the 20 and the 200 are wide apart? There's a neighborhood up there too. This is neighborhood number two. This is location number two. Now, in the wide location, this is where your 20 is wide apart from your 200, and the stock is above both of them. All right? So remember that. 20 is wide from your 200, and the stock is above both of those wide apart moving averages. That's the second best location, okay? 
Now, from this location, you want to play down most of the time. All right? The reason you want to do this is because markets vacillate between narrow, see here, here, narrow, wide, and then back to narrow. Narrow, wide, and then back to narrow. So if you're up here, what's next? Back to narrow. If you're down here, what's next? Back to wide. Now you can also go from narrow to wide this way. Boom. We want green here or red there, right? Red there, right? Red there. Or we want green here or green there. So we don't have to know which direction the market's going to go. We need to know which, what, does it give me an event here? I'm buying. Does it give me an event here? I'm buying. Does it give me an elephant or dual tails or bull 180 there? I'm buying. Does it give me a red elephant here? I'm shorting. Does it give me a bear 180 here? I'm shorting. Does it give me dual topping tail bars here? I'm shorting. You don't have to read the future. You have to wait for the now in the right location. And if I'm going to go down from here, does the market give me right here, does it give me a bear elephant bar? Then I'm going shorting. Does it give me a bear 180? Boom. Does it give me dual topping tail bars? Boom. So neighborhood one, neighborhood two, okay? Neighborhood two. We're looking to bet down to bring us back to a narrow state. Okay. And there's this, the, the, the wide state location at the bottom where your 20 is wide apart from your 200. Your 20 is wide apart from the 200. And you're looking to play up, back up. Why? Because markets vacillate between narrow, wide, back to narrow again. So if you're already wide, the odds are better up, okay? So I want bull elephant bar down there, bull 180, bottoming tail bar, dual bottoming tail bars, all right? Know what locations to play your plays in. So this is the summary of the locations, guys. We've gone, if you're narrow, you're playing these locations. If you're wide, you're playing the opposite locations. You're playing wide back to narrow or narrow back to wide. Ones are narrow back to wide. Twos are wide back to narrow. Boom. You want your houses, your houses are your events, you want your houses to form in locations ones, the ones or the twos. These are your two major neighborhoods. Tell me you understand this. Tail bars. Now, there are really kind of six type of tail bars. I have four here, but they, they all fall into two different categories. There's what we call bottoming tail bars, where the tail of the bar is at the bottom and the body, the little body is at the top. Now, this is a very important concept here about tail bars. What makes a tail bar truly a tail bar is that the majority of the bars range from high to low is tail, so the majority of the bar's range is tail, and the, the body at the top of the bar is small. If you have a body that is not small, but also part of a tail, that's not a pure tail. A pure tail bar is the majority of the bar's range is tail, so it's almost like a snowman.
almost like a snowman, where your tail represents the vast majority of the bar's range. The head or the body, whether it's green at the top or red at the top, represents the smallest part of the body. Then you have your topping tail bars, right? This is where the tail is at the top of the bar. And so it's an upside down snowman where the tail represents the vast majority of the bar's range, but the body being at the bottom, whether it's green or red, represents the smallest part of the bar's range. Now, tail bars can be, be viewed more as torpedoes, if you will. So this looks somewhat like a torpedo, and since the torpedo portion of it is at the bottom, you're looking for upside after bottoming tail bars, and you're looking for downside after topping tail bars. So think of these bars more as torpedoes. Now, notice that there's a green top and a red top for each version. Bottoming tail bars can have a green top, bottoming tail bars can have a red top, and vice versa. Topping tail bars can have a green and red bottom. Now, the different colors don't make a great big, a great degree of difference. It's literally the tail that possesses the vast majority of this bar's power. So as long as you have a decent tail, the top really doesn't matter that much. The odds of follow through are very, very strong. Now, remember I told you that the elephant bar has, that'll represent 60 to 65% of your trades, right? 60 to 65% of your trades. The tail bar will represent about 15% of your trades. So with elephant bars, let's say you're around 60% and tail bars, you're around 15%. So just with elephants and tails, you're, you have the vast majority of whatever the market throws out to you in the terms of trading opportunities. These two represent the vast majority of the market's opportunities. The vast majority of the market's reliable opportunities. There are a plethora of opportunities out there, but I don't want you to even waste time with things that don't have a high follow-through rate. So speaking of follow-through rate, Let's talk about, let's talk about follow through rates. Tail bar, the tail bar has about the same. So the tail bar has about a 70% follow through rate. Same thing. Both are similar in terms of their follow through rate. Dual, sometimes you'll get dual bottoming tail bars and dual back to back topping tail bars. These, when you have a stock that has produced two bottoming tail bars in a row, 90 freaking percent follow through. Guys, this is one of the most reliable things in the world out there. Dual, and don't even let me start talking about triple tail bars. But dual and beyond dual triple these things have 90 percent follow through rate which basically means if you are in somewhere close to the end of the formation of that tail bar you have a 90 percent chance of going home with money 90 percent chance of follow through 90 percent chance of more upside to come which basically means don't forget 90 percent of the time Nine times out of every 10, you get follow through to the upside and nine times out of every 10 tries, you get more downside if you get have dual back to back tail bars. That's how reliable they are. And so because of this higher reliability, my traders are taught to play these more aggressively, to play these with more size, to put more money at risk on the dual and triple um, bottoming and topping tail bars because the reliability is so high. Now, don't forget your numbers. Don't forget your numbers. The elephant bars will have, you're, you're going to do that about 60% of the time, and that has a 70% follow-through rate, all right? Tail bars, you're gonna do these 15% of the time, and they have a 70% follow-through 
follow through rate. I know it's hard for me to draw very well with this, but you get the point. But dual, I'm going to put dual tail bars. They're going to happen. Oh, not even. They, they, they don't happen very often. Something like 2%. But when they do, OMG, 90% follow through rate. So we've got three things so far, right? I've shared with you three things that are going to make the crux, make up the crux of your trading approach. These are where the most, um, the most reliable activity is, the most reliable opportunity is. There's opportunity all over the place, but a lot of it's not reliable. We only want to carve out the most reliable opportunities out there. So you've got three things so far, elephants, tails, and dual tails. How do you know that it's a tail bar? Well, the tail bar, in a sense, the best tail bars are similar to elephant bars. They're a little larger, than your normal bar size and the majority of the bars tail, all right? They don't have to be, but the very best ones, the creme de la creme, are relatively sizable. Oliver, how to deal with losing day and trading losses? So how do I deal with losing days? There's a lot that's embedded in that question. Oliver, how do I deal with my losses? How do I deal with losing days? What's embedded in that question is this assumption that it's possible someday in the future to not have losses or losing days. And that that's a fallacy. And I think that's the start of being able to deal with your losses, understanding that losses are a permanent part of the game, traders. Losses do not disappear. You just start to learn to lose properly. You don't eliminate losing trades. You don't eliminate losing days. I need you to understand this. This will help you stop chasing your tail in this activity. The goal is not to stop losing. The goal is to lose the right way. I used to tell my traders all the time, your future wins are with you right now. You know where they are? They're hiding from you inside of your current losses. Crack them open. Do you understand this traders? I want to see this. Please let me know if you understand this. All right. A few of you, I don't need all of you. A few of you just type. Yes, Oliver. I understand your future wins are with you right now. Your whole future winning career is with you. Now they're inside of your losses. The losses that you're experiencing now, they contain your future. Crack them open. Find out why they exist. Find out why this loss was so big, much bigger than the other losses. Find out why this type of loss keeps happening over and over and over again. You've got to investigate. You've got to use your losses for your future. They contain your future. When your future comes, you'll realize that you, your future of winning trades, consistently winning trades, are not devoid of losing days your future is not devoid of losing trades. It's just that you lose intelligently. You lose the right way. In fact, losing the right way should not even be looked at as a loss. If you have cut a stock the way you plan to cut a trade and you've lost $100, you decided I would lose no more than $100 on this trade and lo and behold, boom, you lost exactly less. You lost $98, all right? $2 less than your promise to yourself. But if you had not done that, the stock would have delivered a $500 loss to you. That's a loss? No, my friend, that's a freaking win. Do you understand? You won. And so that's what starts to happen. You start to appreciate losing the right way. You start to look at losing the right way, not as a loss, but as a win. You start to be proud. Do you understand? Be a proud, intelligent loser. Losing is a permanent part of the game in every single thing in life. Losing is a permanent part of life. 
You'll never, you'll never eliminate losing in life. No sports team expects not to lose. So become a good loser. Become a controlled loser. Become an intelligent loser. In fact, this is the first thing you're supposed to focus on in your trading. You're not supposed to focus on winning. Winning is not your responsibility. Winning, a winning trade, you've done nothing except pray. Do you understand? You haven't done anything to contribute to the win, but the market can't stop itself. So all of the responsibility for stopping the game is on you because the game can't stop itself. The market can't stop itself. The stock can't eliminate itself. You have to eliminate. It's the stock's job to win. It's your job to cut the loss. Do you understand? This trader got out of Apple too soon. So I'll show you. This trader got into this bar and put his stop here, which is a grave error. The, the appropriate stop is here. And if you can't get under that bar, you have to go up to wherever your maximum loss is. And you have to make sure that your maximum loss, wherever that amount is, if it's not there or below, you move it up, find your maximum loss, and when you find it, you have to determine whether or not it's in the bottom third of the bar. If it's not in the bottom third of the bar, this trade is not yours. Your, your stop has to either be under the bar or in the bottom third of the bar. You got it? So by making the stop here, the dude is asking to be taken out. Now, the major problem is that this not being part of our program, he didn't really quite yet understand that when you have power bars, the top third of the bar is the strongest support. The up to a half is the second strongest, but the top third is the most powerful. So you'll often find this, guys. Check this out. You'll often find fat green bars, drops will come back to the top third and bounce. You'll find fat red bars moves back up. We'll come to the top bottom third and drop bottom third of power bar. And that top third of green bars, that's very powerful. This also counts for multiple bar moves. Sometimes you don't get just one bar. You get a series of bars in a run up. This can be looked at as one giant move where the top third is the strongest area of support. This has nothing to do with the time of day. This is power. Power in the top and bottom third with its green power has the biggest form of support at the top of it. Red power has the biggest form of resistance at the bottom of it. This power can be in the form of one bar. It can be in the form of a multiple bar run up or multiple bar run down. This is a multiple bar move, right? Now, you see how it's hanging out there in the top third, more or less? Okay, that's very bullish. This is the strongest area of support. And then up to a half, there's also this area of support right under the third. So under the third to a half and then the top third. You have the top third, right? It's important to understand how powerful that top and bottom third is because it can lead to a lot of trading um, opportunities, right? When you rally one bar, powerful bar, or even a multiple bar run up. I want you to split, always split the run up or the run down in reverse. I want you to do three lines mentally in your mind, the top third line, the bottom third line, and then I want you to do the 50% line. So you've got the one third, you've got the one third here, and you've got the one half here. Now what this does is it sets up. So it sets up a cat. So the categories outside of the move are below 
and above. But let's talk about the categories within the move. So when you pull back from this pull, from this rally to the upside, when you pull back to the in the third, the odds of going to here very high. Okay? When you go to this level, it's it's still good. Not as high, but it's good. Now, as you drop to this level, now the odds of a new high are very are, have gotten very smaller. So what you do is you anticipate two level bounce. One, two. See? And fail. If you get to here, you anticipate two level bounce. One, two. And fail. You understand? If you get to here, one, two. This is my two level rebound concept. Once you break, seriously break the halfway mark. Let's do it on the downside. And then you tell me if you get this. All right. So here's a drop. Boom. And from this drop, you're going to one third, two thirds, halfway. This starts to bounce. Where is this likely going? New low. We get up into this range. Where is this likely going? New low. Maybe not as deep, but new low. But if we get past here, odds are you're not going to make a new low. So now one, two, you see, if you get up here, one, two, most people get into trouble by asking their stop to do what is, which is highly unprobable. It's not very often in life where something that has so much potential and opportunity is also easy. Usually what has high opportunity has a high level of difficulty attached to it, but trading the open is actually not one of them. Most mornings are easy, but this morning was not. These are the things that we should delve into. So let's take a look at a few, few, and you'll understand why I'm saying that this morning was not all that easy. So if we go back to, for instance, meta, this is your morning. It's sort of like a lot of sound and fury. It's signifying absolutely nothing. You got green bar up, red bar down, green bar up, little red bar, little green bar. It's not making up its mind, but there's a clue here that I want to bring your attention to. There's a clue here, right? Listen to me carefully, traders. This is going to reward you for the rest of your trading life if you get this lesson. There's a clue here when you have a morning like this, when you have this back and forth, salt and pepper. No color wants to give you the edge. What's the most recent failure to follow through? Let's go over what I'm talking about when I say uh, failure to follow through. Here is a here's the start of power. Check this out. Boom. And then you get this. That is a failure to follow through on the strength no follow through. All right, let's look at the opposite one and you have, right? Boom, strong red and no follow through. So this is very important. Let me explain to you why. Because strong bars have a high follow through rates depending upon the size. So a strong bar has something like a 70% follow through. Now it gets more of a follow through the bigger it is. And if you really get it nice and powerful, it's something like an 82% follow through rate. Okay. So, but all strong bars have start off at 70. That's extraordinarily high. What does that mean? What does 70% mean? It means that out of every 10 trades, you out of every 10 times you try to bet with the strong bar. If it's red, you bet down. If it's green, you bet up. You're going to have seven rights out of every 10. How does you get an average seven? Sometimes it's less. Sometimes it's more. But the average number of times 
you're going to see the same color again, follow through, red bar, more red bars, right? 70% of the time, seven times out of every 10. That's very high. And that's enough to become rich. Do you understand? You don't need 100% to become rich at this. I like that number 70%. You need 70% or better and you can get rich. Now, 70% is strong bars. 82% is strong plus bars. And let me tell you what 92% is. 92% is strong plus bars off the 200. 92% follow through rate. How does something, how do you get 9.2 9 times out of every 10? It means that a lot of times you're going to get 10, 10, 10, 10 in a row, 10 in a row, 10 in a row. And maybe another time you'll get seven. But a lot of times you'll get 10, 10, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 7, 8, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. That's how you get 9.2 times out of every 10. It's important to know these levels. It's also important to know that all you need is a 70% item, which we have in strong bars. But here's the rub. Because the odds of strong bars of all the different sizes or scenarios, because they're so powerful, because they're so reliable, when they fail, O M G, get ready for the opposite direction. The direction should be to follow through. You see, the direction should be to follow through. That's what the odds suggest. But just like in nature, when something is supposed to happen and doesn't, you better run for cover. I'm going to repeat that again. If something is truly supposed to happen more often than not and doesn't take cover, the opposite scenario is about to knock you out. This is what I call the no follow through event. Write that down. This is called the no follow through event. Strong bar, no follow through. Now, you might get back to back conflicting no follow throughs. Look at Meta. We got the back to back no follow through. So we got the no follow through here. Strong green bar, no follow through. Oh, then we got the red bar, no follow through. But you give the benefit of the doubt to the most recent one. The most recent no follow through is the red one. And now, if you take this out, it's off to the races. Oh, right there. Do you see it? Now, remember this green bar. How beautiful is that? So that was your sign. Oh, wait a minute. Red, this solid red has a high follow through rate. But the market is telling me that that's a fake. That that's a fugazi. You guys know what a fugazi is? It's a fugazi. <laughs> it's a fugazi. It's a fake. 